Engineer 775 here. Excited to share with you the, the latest uh, on distillation off-grid. Looked at a lot of different ways to distill water. I've run a lot of different products, made a lot of homemade uh, pressure cooker type products with coils, and then I came across this. And I was real excited to see the design of this. This is the WaterWise 1600 uh, non-electric or off-grid uh, distiller that can run basically on any heat source. Uh, this is the collection tray inside, has a cool little screen that keeps any water that's boiling from um, getting in the collection system. But the, the heart, the true genius of this is are these three trays where the steam comes from the bottom up through and gets inside of each one of these trays. And you'll see these dimples, looks like it got in a hailstorm. But the water inside each tray will form on the dimples and then drip down and is all collected down through the center column into this, into a tube, into your final destination, whatever container. We're going to use this Pyrex glass container. So the cool thing is this, there's a lot of surface area, there's a lot of convection, a lot of condensation going on, and that's the key to distillation and in other situations. Other uh, contraptions I haven't seen that kind of surface area this thing produces more water uh, sometimes two to three times what I've seen in other uh, distillers so I wanted to share this with you we have I ran it on an electric stove which to me isn't impressive to be able to run a distiller on an electric stove because you might not have electricity okay we've put our water that we wanted to distill in the in the water wise 1600 and there's kind of a little baffle in here kind of lets you know your fill line so you can see where your water's at and then we're going to put the I call them the condensation trays on top and in each tray you put one liter of water it does obviously you can use your non potable water so this is the same water that you would be actually dis distilling the other cool thing is once this water is hot if you have to make multiple batches I would take the water out of the trays it's already preheated and uh, run that into the pot I'd pour that water back into the pot and distill this water uh, because you'll save a lot of a lot of energy and a lot of time so a lot of a lot of experimenting to be done but fundamentally this thing works flawlessly okay we've just started our distillation cycle and we set our timer to 30 minutes because we want to come back in 30 minutes and check on this but you can see the the hunters just I got it cranked all the way open and I ran this last night in the kitchen the cool thing was my wife didn't even know there's no smoke there's no steam that comes off of this unit because of the condensation so you don't even know that you're actually distilling there's a vent cap here you want to make sure that it's loose that it is venting and that's that Nice and loose. You got cool water on this side, hot water on this side, and we're going to come back and check our production here in a little bit. So we started our timer. We're down. We'll check in 30 minutes. So 10 minutes. I think the camera will pick it up. You can hear the hot. It's starting to really rumble here. So we're starting to get hot where we can start uh, boiling off water. So we started with a full pot, almost a little too full. And uh, just starting to see a little steam. Yeah, I gotta stop looking in the pot, right? Is that true? A watch pot never boils? I don't think so. But um, anyway, this is a perfect setup. I, I love the Hunter, Silver Fire Hunter, because you just, the combustion's so clean. I mean, this thing is cranking, whether you believe it or not. I don't know if you can see a heat signature coming off of there. No, no maybe you can. On, I can't see it on the camera. So, this is a great setup. The Hunter, the WaterWise 1600. If you want to distill water, this is the way to go. Okay, our condensate has started to flow around 12 minutes into the cycle. We're, um, you'll see it coming out of the tube. There she comes. So there's our distilled water. Coming at a pretty good rate. Oops. All right, that folks could save your life. And we haven't tried this with um, seawater because we know that seawater is pretty aggressive, but I would use it even if it tore up the pot and the equipment. 
um, just to be able to do this in a disaster situation. I wouldn't care if the stainless steel was eaten away. I, if I could make, you know, they saying 16 gallons of distilled water in a 24-hour period. Obviously, that's a lot of energy, and uh, but you could do it off of biomass in a pretty stealth fashion. So we'll check on in a little bit and see what we can make here. Okay, we're getting um, we're right at our, I would say we're at a steady state production of, of distillate, and it's nice and consistent. Again, this process is slow, but it's making good water. So about 12 minutes into it, there's our timer. We're about 12 minutes into it when we started producing. We've been going uh, 18 minutes of actually making um, potable water, distilled water. We're going to reset the timer and come back. Okay, let's. What are we able to do here? We're able to produce a lot of good potable water. Um, we're getting you know over two quarts per hour, which is about 12 gallons a day. We're getting about 12 gallons a day. Now this was our first test. The manufacturer claims 16 gallons a day. We got at least 12, so we're pretty close. And we're also outside. It's very windy and cool this morning so maybe my heat transfer is not as good on the pot as it could be could do some things like insulate the pot here and you know i think the kind of the the cooling off you see I'm, I'm getting some steam off of these condensation trays so you know maybe because i'm outside i'm not getting the best I, um there goes our alarm so yeah a little over two two quarts in an hour it's 12 gallons a day so I'm pretty happy. You can see the, the hunter's burning perfectly. Really good match for um, the Waterwise distiller. So uh, the other thing we're going to do is going to take and continue this. We're going to take this warm condensing tray water and pour it into the bottom and keep this process going. So this is, you know, though it is hot, I think I could drink it. Ah, that's. Um, that's awesome, actually. That's distilled water and a lot of it. Um, I'm looking forward to trying some seawater and seeing or brackish water. This is just well water, which was fine, but um, that's what we had to test. So, uh, hope that made sense. This is a, an awesome, this is the most water I've ever distilled in this period of time. Very happy with the performance. It was very simple to use. And the combination of the WaterWise 1600 and the Hunter. Uh, from Silverfire is a pretty neat package. So anyway, if you've got any questions or comments, I'd like to hear them. If you can beat that production rate, I'd also like to hear that too. This is Engineer 775 signing out. Yes, the Hunter gets plenty hot. Now see this cavern of aluminum? <laughs> Almost melted through. But just to show you that the hunter gets hot, that is, yeah, there's a hole in it now. Just melted that aluminum plate. Made cool stalactites. Let's see, yeah, there you go. Made a cool aluminum stalactite.